Hello, everyone. I want to go over a comment I received. The comment asks, what are you doing for the dynamic cloud shadows? It looks cool. In this case, it's just so much easier to demonstrate how I approach the clouds in this scene over here. At the most fundamental level, all this cloud is doing is it is masking our light with a black and white texture that is animated or scrolling or tiling, however way you want to phrase it. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this. For this scene, I am using Unity 2022. So if I go to and create a directional light, the main thing I want to show you is when I create a directional light, where I can mask this light is this portion, this area that says cookie within the emission section of the light component. Think of the cookie as an area where you can mask your light. Let's go and get started. I'm going to create a new folder. Well, first off, let's go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this light, bring back my main light, and we're just going to recreate this cookie effect that you'll see right here that's connected into the cookie. So again, I created a new folder. I'm going to call this cloud shader graph tutorial 01. If you go to an empty area within your project, right click, go to create, shader graph, and click on custom render texture. And we're gonna call this cloud custom render texture. Press enter. And now we need a render texture. So right click again, and it should be in under create. Where is render texture? Hopefully you see render texture in this drop down menu. I'm going to call this cloud render texture. Now I'd like to create the actual black and white cloud texture. I'm going to just show you how to quickly do this in Photoshop. Um, that's what I used originally. A big part of what's going to make this cloud visuals really stand out is going to be how you actually do this. In this case, I'm going to do it relatively quickly, but hopefully you spend a little bit more time than what I'm about to spend on your cloud. So in my case, I'm just going to make it 2048 by 2048. And a quick way to get something going real fast, just go to filter. And this is just the way I'm doing it. Obviously, you can create higher fidelity graphics or clouds. Um, you can paint it by hand. You can make it stylized. In this case, I'm just going to do a very quick go to filter, render, and then click on clouds. From here, I want this to be white and black. So I'm going to press Control U, or let's go ahead and just click everything. Image, adjustments, hue saturation. And from here, I'm just going to reduce saturation. Now I want higher contrast, so I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. I'm going to take this far right handle and just bring it all the way down. And I'm actually going to want to push it a little bit more and just adjust this to just uh, get more better looking shapes. I want to kind of cut into it. What is showing as black is going to be your shadow cast on the environment. And I'm just kind of guesstimating here. In my case, I'm just hoping this comes out looking decent. Something like that, perhaps. All right, so now that we have our cloud, let's let's just say this is the cloud we like. We We want this in our game, and we like the way it looks. From here, you're going to need to make sure that this is tileable. And when it tiles, it needs to be seamless. So how I'm going to do that here is I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and Offset. In my case, my texture is 2048 by 2048. So I'm just going to half that number to 1024 by 1024. And it looks like, well, that's nice. So Photoshop's texture that it creates using this cloud filter or renderer, um, it is tiling by default. So I guess you don't have to do any cleanup. That's nice. OK, let's go and save this. I like to save it as a PNG cloud. I'm going to call it cloud 01 texture. Oh, you know what? Let's more accurately call it a mask. So that came out nice. You want to double click on your cloud shader. And when you open it up, you should see something like this. It's just pretty much empty. Well, it is empty. Let me go ahead and adjust my layout so that it's easier to work in. We're going to need a few parameters here. First, create a vector 2. And this is for our speed. Our cloud could either go sideways or up or down, x, y. It's on a 2D dimension. So this is our speed. We can control which direction it tiles or which direction it animates or moves in. And I am going to set the default value to 0.5. Make sure you set this some sort of default value because you might think like 
oh, this thing isn't animating. If you forget to set this to, and it's zero, it means that when you apply this material to your light, the clouds won't move. So if your clouds aren't moving, make sure you come back into the speed setting and set something here. And then another thing that I like to do is I'm going to create a float. And this is for me to control the intensity. Inten intensity. Hopefully I spelled that correctly. Of the cloud. So I'll set that up for later. I'm going to set... I prefer to work with sliders whenever possible. So I'm going to set the default value to one. So I want it to be 100% intensity in the beginning. And then I want to be able to knock it back if it's too dark. And then last but not least is our texture. So you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it cloud texture. So one thing that I like to do when I'm building something out, I'll bring the texture in just so I can see and preview it in real time while I'm working in the texture itself. Because in the final version, I'll delete this. But if I bring this parameter in, there's no texture connected to it yet. So I'm not going to be able to see all the effect. It'll just be harder for me to make sure it's working correctly. So that's why I'm dropping this texture in here for now. I'm going to need a few things. Let's go ahead and bring a time in. So we have our time. I'm going to need a multiply. I want to connect our speed, which is a vector 2, into the first slot of the multiply, and then the time into the second slot. And from here, I need to run this into a fraction node. Future Daniel here, I wanted to elaborate real quickly about what the fraction node is actually doing. So when we run this value through the fraction node, all it's doing is removing this unnecessary whole number. And you'll notice when I delete this, the visuals on our texture do not change. And from here, I want to grab a UV node, make sure it's set to UV0, and add it into here. So now we have our UV tiling in the zero to one space. And obviously we get to check that soon. Let's go ahead and this is why I have this texture here because I'll get to actually see what this looks like. And from here, I want to add my own thing here. Let's bring in a blend node. And I've done some prior testing on this for this blend node for, to work the way I like it to. Um, I need a color node, set this to white. And then my blend is set to overwrite. This goes into base one, or the, the base of the parameter. And then my actual texture goes into the blend. And then the opacity goes into the intensity. And even without this intensity here, you can just check this, making sure it works. You can come here. When it's zero, the clouds are fully off. When it's hundred, when it's one, it's 100% on. So that's the overwrite. And this is how we're going to art direct our shadows. We have one more thing to do. We want this texture to animate on the UV space. So we connect our add node into the UV. And basically this is how you just ensure that it's working. So our textures are now working and they're scrolling. And this is our clouds that's going to be in our cookie. So now I'm going to connect this blend into our base color. And now that I know that this texture is working, I am going to, instead of it having been connected into this cloud texture, I'm going to connect my actual cloud texture parameter into there. This is going to wipe out the visuals that I needed to make sure this shader is working. But now that I know it's working, it's okay to do this. But I also want to connect the intensity into the opacity. And I'll control this through a slider on the actual final asset. And I think that's it. Speed, I'm using it over here. Let me just double check, and just go through this. 
All right, that looks fine. Just go ahead and test it. And I may be using, let me see something. Something looks a little bit off with the, so I grabbed the wrong render texture type. My apologies. So instead of grabbing the render texture here, I need to grab the custom render texture. It's very confusing. It's like they're so closely worded. Cloud custom render texture. Um, this one you'll notice has a material parameter here because that's what I need to connect my new shader to. I'm going to delete this because I did not need that. So here, a few things to set it up. We need this to be set to sRGB over here. And this is from prior testings that I've done. Wrap mode to repeat because we're going to be tiling this. Let's create a material from this. Create material. And we're going to call this cloud mat. Okay. Let's just keep it simple. Cloud mat. Let's make sure we connect our texture into this by creating the reference. That looks good. Let's come back here on our custom render texture, connect the material, set the update mode to real time. And I think that should do it. Yep, it's moving. Maybe a little too fast, but drop it into our scene and see what this looks like. So in this case, we want to drop the custom render texture into the cookie slot. Right now, it already has a different cloud in there, but I'm gonna just remove it just so you can see what it looks like without. And then now I'm going to drop this new cookie. It's very fast. Um, so here, a few things. You can control the scale here, like the tiling of your, the clouds. I like my prior values. Uh, well, actually, maybe I'd actually might increase it. Let's see, 2000, let's do 1500, 1200. Um, well, you know what, let's make it much bigger, 2500. Let's make this 4000. I know it's going a little bit fast, but I'll calm this down. So here, going back to our material, the cloud material, I'm going to set this to 0.05. All right, that looks a little bit better. Still a little too fast. Two. Okay, that's good enough. And then you can come here if you wanted to put some Y and you, know, you want to offset it a little bit different. So that's looking better. And you can adjust this as you go. And we're not in play mode. It will smoothen out if you're in play mode. And here, here's the nice thing about the intensity slider. You can art direct a cloud. So if I come here and slide it down, you can get different intensities. If you put it to zero, the cloud turns off. And if you bring it up, like somewhere around, maybe something like that. 